I am a community nursery nurse with Paris Health Visitors. I'm doing a little video today to talk about home safety and how to prevent accidents with your child and your baby at home. So the main cause of hospital attendance that we see for children under five, the main causes are falls, their poisonings, chokings, um, burns and scalds. So what I want to do is give you some advice about how to try and prevent some of these accidents because the majority of accidents that happen at home are preventable. So children, just by virtue of their age and they, their development, they want to explore their environment. They like to practice new skills and push the boundaries and limitations. So therefore, as parents and adults, we've got a duty to protect them and keep them safe from harm as much as we can. So first thing I'd like to talk about toys and play equipment. So the things that you need to be looking for when you're purchasing items for your child or your baby is to make sure that it has the British standard marks on it. So these three marks here you need to be looking for. They tell you that they have been um, gone through stringent testing to make sure that they are safe. So please look for those to make sure you're buying from a reputable supplier. Also, um, if you're looking at the, um, an age then obviously this sign here, you need to look for if your child is under the age of three, um, because there is risk of choking, um, maybe small parts and things if you're buying things um, that have got this, this uh, mark on. So just be mindful of that. If you've got any concerns about um, anything you've bought and you're not sure or you're, you're worried that something broke off it and it shouldn't have done, you can contact Trading Standards and they will give you some advice there. Um, you can also have a look at the Child Accident Prevention Trust website. They can give you information um, um, about um, lots of things around safety with your child at home. So when you're looking at toys, just be careful of button batteries and any other battery. Um, compartments of toys can become loose, so check them regularly um, because batteries can cause um, quite catastrophic injuries um, and harm to a child if they swallow them. So if you think your child has swallowed a battery, then it's important you ring 999 straight away, even if you're not sure, because um, time is of the essence there. So be mindful um, of small detachable things. So um, it's quite important, obviously, with babies, they put things in their mouth. Um, so if there's small bits that have come off and can detach, be, be mindful of that. Straps and strings and ropes and things, obviously they can cause strangulation injury. So even in terms of a child's dressing gown, um, anything like that can become um, a ligature. So just be careful there. Trapping fingers and things, so obviously watching your doors, um, but also trapping fingers in small toys, um, that's something to be mindful of too. Um, flammable materials, so if you're buying dressing up clothes, just check again that it's got the um, non-flammable marking on it, um, just to make sure that you're safe that way. Um, if your, your baby is putting things in their mouth a lot, just be vigilant with sanitising your toys. Obviously keeping all toys clean, and particularly now um, with the coronavirus, it's quite important to sanitise things regularly and make sure that they are safe um, that way. Safe sleeping wise, I'm just going to signpost you to the Lullaby Trust. They give lots of information if you're considering buying any product around sleep. They do some um, lots of information and leaflets that you can look at just to make sure that you are buying um, appropriately and safely for your baby. So anything to do with safe sleeping for your baby, please go to the Lullaby Trust. So in general, when we're thinking about safety and, and, and generally things at home, trying to avoid things that could pose a choking hazard. So boiled sweets, we've got Easter coming up, so mini eggs, trying to avoid them. They are the exact size for your baby's windpipe, your child's windpipe. So obviously we want to avoid anything like that. Um, if you're giving foods like grapes, quartering them along with cherry tomatoes, those sorts of foods. Please don't feed your child in the car because obviously you're not able to see them um, properly and supervise them effectively because you're in the front. So windows is another thing you need to think about. So um, we see lots of falls. Um, that's one of our top things that we, we see. Um, so making sure your windows are safe. You can fit window restrictors which prevent your child from opening the window fully it gives them, so you can, it'll only open a small gap, but if you did need to get out in a fire, then you can pop the restrictor up and open the, the window fully. So trying to avoid things like furniture against windows, something your child could climb on, um, can obviously be dangerous. 
Please make sure that you have smoke alarms fitted at home and carbon monoxide detectors. Um, if you contact your local fire service or if you have a look online, you can actually request a free home safety check. So the fire service, when they're in your area, will come round and have, have a look and give you some advice about an escape route and where your um, smoke alarms need to be fitted and they will actually fit them for free too. So again, thinking of windows, please, please make safe your cord blinds. So if you've got a cord um, for your window blinds that hangs down and creates a loop, that's making like a ligature, which is a big risk for any child. So please either purchase a cleat clip like this that you can secure to the wall and wrap the cord around, or snip it through the bottom and tie it up just to make that safe. Plug sockets, so a lot of people still have these plug socket covers at home. They aren't recommended anymore, we've done research on them and they've been found to be um, more of a hazard, more of a risk if they're in than if they're not. So please take them out and just try and prevent your child accessing the plug sockets and not letting them play with them. So take those out from home. Hot drinks, so we see a lot of ch children scolded, um, so please, please keep hot drinks away from your baby and your toddler. Um, it takes up to and over 20 minutes for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee to cool to the point that it wouldn't burn. So um, it's really important not to have a hot drink and while you're holding your baby and not to put your hot drinks on um, surfaces like coffee tables where your child could reach. So please be vigilant with that. Animals, if you've got animals at home, like dogs, then um, please never leave your child or your, and your dog together alone. High supervision is really important, even with dogs that you trust. It's important to teach your child to be respectful of your animals, so um, avoid them pulling ears, pulling their tails, climbing on their backs. Um, obviously, it's um, we want the even if you think your, your dog is quite safe, it's still important and respectful that your child learns not to do that. Um, have a safe space for your dog to go that your child cannot reach them so they can move away if they, if they are feeling um, under threat. So um, that's quite important too. So please be aware even if you feel your dog is quite safe. If your child's accessing the garden to play, um, obviously it's really important to clear up any faeces that are out there so that doesn't pose any hazard to. Nappy sacks, so um, a lot of people use nappy sacks to discard their, their nappies. For a baby and a child, they are very sensory, um, um, encouraging them to sort of pick up the bags and touch them because they're scrunchy, they smell nice, and they're quite attractive to a baby and a toddler. Um, so please keep them out of reach along with any other carrier bags and plastics that might be a risk there. Medications, so any paracetamol, any calpol, any ibuprofen, any, any medication that you've, ha you've got, please don't leave any in your handbag because your child can, um, can reach it there. Um, make sure it's locked away and they're not able to get into, into their, that cupboard as well. And that includes things like multivitamins and things like that, so please be vigilant that way. Stair gates. So up until um, your child is about two, you may feel the need to fit stair gates to prevent them going up and down the stairs. So obviously we would um, recommend them. The ones we would recommend are the ones that you screw and secure to the wall. So try and avoid the ones that are pressured, um, which you've got to turn um, to, to give a pressure to hold it in place. They can work loose over time and children do like pulling at them. So the safest ones you can fit are the ones that you actually screw into the wall. And just be mindful of the trip hazard along the bottom as well. If you've got a bar that goes along the bottom, that can pose a bit of a hazard too. When your youngest child is um, over 24 months, then it's, it's important to remove them so they don't start climbing them. Okay, so thinking about risk assessing your home in each room. So in the kitchen, um, it's important to think about any sharp objects, so knives, scissors and things, hot fluids when you're cooking, so you've got kettles, um, again, hot drinks. If you, you're using your oven, please turn your handles inwards so your child can't reach up. And if you are cooking, it's you know, a, a quite a good practice to keep them away from the kitchen if you can. Your washing tablets, they're quite enticing for children too. They're nice and squidgy and they smell nice, so um, put those up somewhere safe. When your child is starting to wean and you're going to use a high chair, 
It's quite important to choose one with a nice stable base that's not going to cause a trip hazard in the kitchen. Um, and also try and um, choose a harness that comes over the shoulders, around the waist and up between the legs. That is the safest um, harness that you can get for your child because um, there will come a time when they start to lean over a little bit or they can wriggle and move um, and we need to keep them safe in the high chairs that way because that's quite a height to fall from. Okay, so moving into the living room now, things you need to think about there would be fire guard. So if you are using your fire, um, either an electric fire or a gas fire or a log burner, an open fire, please fit a fire guard. So the ones we recommend are similar to that. Um, and we would recommend securing it to the wall either side so that your child can't squeeze between it to the side. I would keep a fire guard up for as long as possible at home in case there is a risk of them accidentally falling against it in play. So even when your child gets a little bit bigger and you feel like they've got awareness that not to go near it, I would still keep it on because there is always that risk. Please don't use extended stair gates as a fire guard. The bars are um, they're wider, so obviously they could reach their hand in and they're not made for that purpose. So please buy a well-fitted fire guard for your fire. Other things to avoid um, or to think about when you're in your living room, so fire lighters, they, they are poisonous, so um, we have known children ingest fire lighters, um, so please keep them safe. Air fresheners, candles, candles are a big, um, um, a big risk of fire there because of fire, house fires, so please be careful with candles and keep them out of reach of your child. If you have any large furniture that your child could maybe pull or climb, then please make safe that you should, if you've bought any large furniture, have little brackets to secure it against the wall. Please use them um, because there have been injuries of children where the cupboard has actually fallen down on top of them. Think about loose cables, so if you've got lamps and things where your child could come along and just pull the lamp, or if they're, if they're a baby and they're rolling, they can pull a lamp and it could come down on top of them. So please make them safe, keep your cables um, tied away. If you have hot radiators, so radiators that get warm, just think about if you've got your baby is learning to roll, just make sure that they haven't got um, the access to roll against a radiator um, in case they aren't able to roll back again. Um, so preventing burns that way too. Um, when you're looking at equipment like bumbos and jumperoos and baby walkers and door bouncers, we don't tend to recommend them because they aren't good for your child's development. There is also an, an extra risk that they can reach places that they may not be able to reach. So for instance, if they were in a baby walker, they might be able to reach a tabletop easier than if, um, if they were just on the floor. And you know, thinking of tummy time and floor play for your baby is very important. So if you do use any of these products, please be careful with them and use them for a very short period of time. Bumbos and baby bouncing chairs, please do not put them on a tabletop. They're all designed to be on the floor where they're safest because it can be a big um, risk of injury if they were to fall from height. So your bathroom, thinking about bath water. If you are running a bath for your toddler, then please run the cold water first, just in case of a chance they could climb into it um, when it's not ready. If you're running the hot water first, there's a risk there of scalding. High supervision is really important in the bath um, and preparing so that you're not tempted to um, run and get a towel or um, get something you've forgotten. Think about what you need first before you put your baby in the bath so you're preventing anything happening there. Things that might be poisonous in your bathroom and in other rooms, so your cleaning products, so any bleach, um, any squirty spray cleaners, anything disinfectant wise, shampoos, mouthwashes, everything like that is poisonous for your child. So please lock them away um, and keep them safe that way. Razor blades, anything sharp in your bathroom need to be put away too, out of reach from your child. In your bedroom, you might think about hair straighteners. We do see a lot of burns on the feet um, from people leaving hair straighteners that are still hot on the floor. They take quite a long time, so we do see burns on the feet and the hands from hair straighteners, so just make them safe too. Once, uh, please be mindful of not to leave your baby on the bed. 
Um, there is always a first time that they could roll over, even if they haven't done it before. Um, so please, please don't, um, don't leave your baby on the bed unsupervised. Your contraceptive pill, so um, obviously making that safe as two, that's a medication. So rather than leaving it by your bedside, um, put it somewhere safe in your medicine cabinet so that's locked away. Lastly, just thinking of the garden and if you, anybody who lives in, on a farm, um, making sure that your child's got a safe, secure area that they can play in. So it may be the neighbour's garden that poses a hazard. So it is important to make sure that they've got a safe area that you know is enclosed and safe for your child. Um, if, you, if you live on a farm, please use high-vis jackets, please have areas that they are going they can access that haven't got any big machinery and vehicles um, that, that could cause injury that way. Poisonous plants, thinking about that, um, you know, you might have plants like um, hawthorns or um, uh, foxgloves, things like that that could be poisonous for your child. Just be aware of that and mindful and you might need to barrier off any areas that aren't safe there. And lastly, thinking of water in your garden or on your farm or on your property, if you have any ponds or rivers or water butts, it's really, really important to make them safe. And I would say as well, when we're talking about home safety and garden safety, it's, it's important to think about every home and every garden and every place of play that your child has. So it may be grandparents, um, it may be a place of work, it may be a, another family member's house. It's important that everywhere your child can access needs to be um, as safe as it can be. So if you're, you've got grandparents that have got a river nearby or a ponds nearby, please fence it off, please make it safe um, just so that we can prevent these, these accidents happening. So um, that's it for now. Thank you very much. And, um,